Puerto Rico is located in one of the most unique geographical locations in the world. It sits in the Eastern Caribbean Sea, which has always made it valuable for naval and commercial operations. And this has made it a prize for many powerful nations. Although Puerto Rico was conquered and colonized by Spain in the late 15th century, it has always been coveted by other European colonial powers, and some have tried to wrestle the island away from Spain. Chief among them has been the English, who attempted to invade and conquer Puerto Rico not once but three times in the 16th and 18th centuries. The first attempt was in 1595 when the British Queen Elizabeth sent Sir Francis Drake and Sir John Hawkins on an expedition against Spain in Puerto Rico. Drake led a fleet of 27 ships and 2,500 men to attack San Juan, the capital of the island. He arrived in the San Juan Bay on November 22nd only to encounter a strong Spanish defense led by Admiral Pedro Tello de Guzman. Drake tried to land his troops at the Ensanada de Escabron on the eastern end of the San Juan Islet, but was repelled by the Spanish artillery fire from the force of San Felipe del Moro and San Cristobal. He then decided to sail into the bay with his ships, hoping to capture the city. However, the entrance to the bay was blocked by two sunken vessels and five Spanish warships. A fierce battle would occur, in which Drake lost eight to 10 ships and 400 men, while the Spanish lost only one ship and 40 men. Drake was unable to breach the Spanish defenses and was forced to retreat. He also suffered the loss of Sir John Hawkins, who had joined him on this expedition and who died of illness during the attack. Overall, the Spanish resistance and fortifications were too much for Sir Francis Drake to overcome. The second attempt to conquer Puerto Rico by the English occurred only three years later in 1598, as Queen Elizabeth had been distraught by the defeat of Drake and Hawkins and wanted to avenge it as soon as possible. This attempt was led by George Clifford, the Earl of Cumberland, who came with 21 ships and 1,700 men. It was June 16th when Clifford's fleet reached the island. Having learned of Drake's failure, he took a different approach. He landed 1,000 men far from San Juan and had them march towards it. However, this first attempt failed and the troops that were on the water with him had to retreat. Clifford actually became ill and almost drowned. The next attack had more success. A party of musketeers picked off the Spanish cannoneers, and another party was sent ashore midway between the fort garrisoned with 250 men and the town. The Spanish, with their retreat cut off, abandoned the fort after a siege of 15 days and fell back to the town, which the British had ransacked. In quick succession, the three forts of San Juan, including El Moro, surrendered on the terms Clifford imposed on the Spanish governor, Antonio Mascara. The Earl of Cumberland now controlled San Juan. He told the Spanish residents to leave for other islands within several weeks. He then asked for volunteers from his English crew to remain as the nucleus of an English colony. However, as fate would have it, 700 of the men from the invading force became sick and died. The Earl of Cumberland, realizing the bad luck, tried to negotiate a ransom with the Spanish. The Spanish, though, were aware of the sickness spreading among the English forces, so they stalled waiting for the sickness to spread further among Clifford's men. Overall, this conquest by the English only lasted 50 to 65 days. With the loss of so many men, the English didn't have enough crew to continue. The final attempt by the English to take Puerto Rico would take place two centuries later. This attempt coincided with the 1796 to 1808 Spanish Anglo War, and it would be the largest force. It all started when English Admiral Sir Henry Harvey's fleet picked up Sir Ralph Abercrombie's army in Barbados. Together they captured Trinidad from the Spanish before heading for San Juan. On the 17th of April in 1797, Lieutenant General Sir Ralph Abercrombie's fleet of 68 vessels 
appeared offshore Puerto Rico with a force of 7,000, which included Royal Marines, German auxiliaries, and French emigres. Two of his ships then blocked San Juan Harbor. The governor, Field Marshal Don Ramon de Castro and Gutierrez had already mobilized his 4,000 militia and 200 Spanish garrison troops, which combined with 300 French privateers, 2,000 armed peasantry, and paroled prisoners, brought his troop strength up to almost equal that of the English. He also had 376 cannon, 35 murders, four howitzers, and three swivel guns. Abercrombie landed 3,000 troops on the 18th of April and took control of Cangrejos. The Spanish governor and field marshal Ramon de Castro moved his forces to Escambron and the Spanish first line of defense. On the 21st of April, the English started a seven-day artillery duel with the Spanish force of San Geronimo and San Antonio, located at the Borincón Inlet. At the same time, Further Spanish forces put pressure on the British positions. The Spanish recaptured Martin Peña Bridge while militia led by Sergeant Francisco Diaz raided behind British lines, bringing back prisoners. Then on Sunday, the 30th of April, the British seized their attack and began their retreat from San Juan. On May 1st, the Spanish learned the British were gone, leaving behind arms and ammunition. Thus ended the last attempt by the English to take Puerto Rico. We can only imagine what Puerto Rico and the Puerto Rican people would be like had the English succeeded. Would they have changed the name of the island? Would we even be called Puerto Ricans? Would our customs and culture be much different? I for one am glad they didn't succeed. I can't imagine how our culture and people would have evolved had they been successful, especially during the first attempt. It's not that the Spanish had been good colonial masters, but I just think it might have been worse with the English. They actually came very close during the second attempt by the Earl of Cumberland, George Clifford. Had fate not stepped in when a large portion of his crew became ill and died, there's a good chance they would have at least changed the course of Puerto Rican history, and who knows how much more in the Americas would have changed. It only takes a small event to drastically change the course of history. Eventually, the United States was able to wrestle Puerto Rico away from Spain in 1898, but by that time, the core of what is Puerto Rican identity had already been formed. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Help us to spread this video by sharing. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more videos.